Hello, welcome back. Thank you for joining me on my channel. My cerebral amyloid angiopathy journey. It's now February, right at the end of February. In fact, we're almost going into March. And how have I been? You know, I've not been too bad. I don't know whether, um, like I'm not a hypochondriac, but I just feel like there's differences in myself. Um, I get quite a few headaches now, but I don't know because I've always, I've had for many years uh, eye problems. I'm blinded, almost blind in one eye, and I've got bad vision in the other eye, and there's a whole story behind that that I'm not going to bore you with. But I don't know whether um, it's my vision and it's giving me headaches. Um, so when I when we get our car back from the repairs, because it's in for hail damage repair, uh, I think I'll go get my eyes tested, and then I can see if that's what it is. Um, I'm on the computer as much as I usually am, but I've been printing off a lot of stuff and I've been reading through that. Um, so whether, you know, my reading glasses are just need updating as well. So we'll go into that. Um, it's not scary. Um, and, you know, you kind of, what's the use of complaining about it it's time that everyone's going to have to live with what's going on so i don't think it's that you know need to be worried to the point that i'm concerned and want to chat to people about it except for you of course uh, how are you doing have you had any major bleeds macro bleeds you know minor bleeds um again still i've not seen a neurologist it's been in June will be two years since I was diagnosed um, and about eight years since my symptoms started. Uh, but right now, basically everything's going fine. I feel fine. I feel a bit uplifted now. Um, in fact, we're uh, our, the country that I live in, Australia, uh, now has lifted travel bans. So if you are a vaccinated citizen, um, you can freely travel out of the country and uh, there's there's no restrictions. So that's good and that has inspired us now to um, start preparing to go on a trip. Now my place of choice is if you've been watching me probably knows I'm in love with Thailand and um, I just can't wait to get back to Thailand. <laughs> so what I've been doing recently is, um, of course, you can't travel unless you've got travel insurance. And if you've got CAA, you're going to have a hard time finding anybody who is going to cover you. Um, so let's, we're going to talk about that. Getting, finding coverage. Is it possible? Is it a heartbreak just? waiting to happen um so we'll see so i've been you know looking through um travel insurers looking through what they automatically cover and let me tell you what they automatically cover they should bloom and well cover because you know i can't see half the things there as being anything major um so I'm going to, uh, down the track, tell you some of the ones. And now I'm talking about, I live in Australia. So I'm going to go through and tell you some of the ones that um, that I went through. Uh, most of them are online. So you get a quote online. Now, the first time I did this, um, the questions were, uh, you know, have you done this, 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 this? in the past two years well right now until june i haven't reached the two-year mark so i'm not sure how that would have gone gone but when i look through the questions and i realized that i didn't really 
know the answers, the, the, the absolute answers to some of those questions. Some of the questions were, have you had a hemorrhage? What kind of hemorrhage have you had? How many strokes have you had? And I thought, you know, insurance companies look for any reason not to cover you. Yeah? Yeah. And if you've been down that track, you know. And um, so I thought to myself, I don't want to risk getting any answers wrong. Um, and my normal GP, I looked through the... Uh, let, sort of the you know when you're in hospital and then you leave and then they kind of the hospital sends a sort of like a synopsis I guess of what happened to you etc and I've looked through those and I really can't see anything that gives an accurate answer as far as I'm concerned so then I thought okay I'll have to contact the, the neurologist so the neurologist I am under I may or may not have met when I was in in the hospital two years, nearly two years ago. However, he he is the name. He is the signature, of the person that's put his signature at the bottom of these letters to my GP. So where better to start than the guy that sticks his name on a letter about you to your GP? Yeah, yeah, that's what I figure too. I also figure I'd be lucky. <laughs> if I got an answer. So I decided that what I would do is I rang the hospital to get what would be the best address to send this letter to and was given the address. So when I wrote the letter, I told him that I wanted to get overseas travel and, I, you know, and, the, and I, I, I put it that I didn't really know the terminology, the correct terminology of what I had, how many strokes I had, did I have a hemorrhage, what kind of hemorrhage did I have, and, um, and uh, yeah. Now, most of my working life has been in administration, and I seem to remember back, and I haven't worked now for eight years, and for seven years before that, I actually wasn't in a position where I had to send out letters. So, you know, things, times change, things change. But I do sort of remember uh, being taught that and told that um, if in fact you work uh, in an office or anywhere where you would receive mail for, say, the manager, um, if it actually had personal and private, the person receiving the mail, like myself, would have been in admin. It you didn't know, you didn't answer, you didn't open. Sorry, you didn't open that mail. It was personal and private. If you didn't have personal and private, then you open it all ready for them to read it when it gets given to them. So I wrote my letter, not a long letter, just a very basic letter. Uh, explain why I was actually writing to him as being the signature on the bottom of a piece of paper and ask whether he would find the time um, in his very busy schedule to answer me. And guess what? <laughs> like he actually bloody answered me. That is, I was like blown away. And you know what? I think it was two weeks. It, it was next to nothing. So after getting my letter back from my neurologist, um, I then thought that what I would do is um, check out reviews on this first company um, that I felt would uh, cover me. The reviews were not very good. Um, most of the reviews were actually around the fact that people that had taken out insurance and actually had taken out COVID insurance as far as they thought, uh, they weren't being covered and they weren't getting, when, when they try to reach out 
and put in a claim or to contact, they weren't getting any contact back. Now this made me very nervous and um, so I decided that uh, once I had, you know, the neurologist's um, letter in my hand, that I would just keep looking. And that's when I came across an insurance company called One Cover. So I decided then uh, again that I would do the online uh, quote and see how I went with that. Um, so let me just pause there for one second because I've lost my train of thought and you know what that's like. Okay, I think I've got it now. <laughs> You know what it's like, guys, with your memory. You just like lose track as well. All right, so uh, I came across another company called One Cover, and um, I filled out an online quote form. And with this company, uh, it was really basically asking what you did, what happened to you, this, 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 within the last three months, and which to me was better because the first company I had found was asking you in the last two years. Um, anyway, so I filled that out and um, with having my letter I was able to fill out the questions appropriately and it did come back and, and say that it had accepted and that, that had been granted the cover. And um, then, you know, I could go to the next step, which was paying for it. Now I'm actually making this video between the first take and the, and the second take I did on, on the thing that I totally lost my mind and where I was. So I'm just making this now to slip it in. So there might be, it might not seem quite like it's <laughs> flowing because I just uh, lost where I was. Um, so just to cover it. So what is going to happen in a minute is I'm going to come on and I'm going to tell you that uh, when I applied for the quote and prior to it taking me to the payment, I was able to print out the quote and when I printed out the quote it actually had a copy of all the questions it asked me and so I'm now going to read that paperwork to you that said what uh, questions I was asked and how I answered them. <laughs> so that's why I look a bit dazed in the next part because it's like well, what did I even talk about in the first part? <laughs> you guys know. All right, so we will now go over to the next part of the video and hopefully that will make sense. Okay, so um, what I'm going to tell you about now uh, is that when I do apply for travel insurance, I always make sure that I get my husband and myself on the same insurance policy. <clears throat> Obviously, this means that um, if something happens to him and he's too sick and I can't go, obviously, then that covers me as well and vice versa. Um, so, and again, you know, when I talk about the price at the end of this, this is a price for three months. So we are, will be applying for three months. Normally we go anywhere between four and six weeks. This will be priced on three months. Um, so I went on to do a quote and it enabled me to fill it all out and at the end I would move to the next stage, the final stage would have been the payment. But obviously I haven't gone to that far because I'm a bit too far out from when we're actually leaving. Okay, so I opened it up begin my quote. Now obviously initially you're going to get coverage for lost luggage, uh, just general medical care, um, you know stolen or lost cameras, which we did, which I did. And then it gave me the option to click another button for pre-existing medical, which I did. 
Now, based on the information that I had in my letter, I started to fill out the application. I'm going to actually just read you the questions so that it will help you somewhat in we're talking about this company one cover one cover travel insurance so obviously you begin your quote you fill in all the appropriate bits and pieces that they ask you to and when i it came up with these questions so it asked me to put in what my pre-existing medical condition was and as I started to type the word cerebral there was a drop down list and um, cerebral amyloid angiopathy angiopathy was in that list so I was happy about that because it's obviously something they've come across before therefore the questions they're going to ask you you would think would relate to that um, medical problem so pops up the condition questions do you require assistance with dressing or eating or washing never so it gives you three questions to choose from so I'll be telling you what I chose do you require more assistance or supervision than you did six months ago no when you travel will you always be accompanied by someone you know yes have you ever had a stroke or brain hemorrhage yes and I think it gave me because I've got here written on the paper brain hemorrhage and stroke so it probably then give me the options what to choose under the heading brain hemorrhage how long ago was your last brain hemorrhage I chose more than three months ago has your condition worsened significantly in the last 12 months no do you currently use any mobility aids no how many brain hemorrhages have you had in total working on what the letter from my neurologist said uh, I had I chose three or more I think it was maybe one two and three and more so three or more are you in waiting investigation and or treatment for this condition no have you been diagnosed with epilepsy no then there was a heading of cerebrovascular accident and the questions under that heading was how many strokes have you had in total based on the letter that my doctor gave me two how long ago was your last stroke more than three months ago how many strokes have you had in the last six months I haven't had any within the last six months are you awaiting surgery for this condition or any scans to be performed no again do you currently use any mobility aids no have you had a transient ischemic attack which is TIA or mini stroke since your last stroke no do you suffer from an irregular heartbeat in brackets arterial fibrillation no are you on medication to thin the blood no have you ever been a smoker no now that's all that they asked that they used to decide whether they were going to cover me then and then I was able to actually print this quote out and it was um, I think it was you know you could use it within 30 days and just go ahead and pay for it it then popped up and said application approved for pre-existing medical conditions of cerebral amyloid angiopathy brain hemorrhage other and cerebrovascular accident now remember we've already filled out for just our run-of-the-mill travel um insurance this you know stolen wallets lost cameras and this is now in addition to that so the cost of one and now we've got the medical cost of the pre-existing now this is for three months the extra for the pre-existing was seven hundred and nine dollars and thirty six Australian total now I'll 
I'll just let you know that normally for Trevor and I, my husband and I, to travel for um, four weeks is usually around the mid 800 Australian dollars. For three months now, so the total for the all of the whole shebang is only $2,248.55 Australian and that is actually cheaper overall. Now in the past when I've traveled, I've been able to get some medical, pre-existing medical for, um, you know, had spinal stenosis and a few other little problems and, and uh, they either decided to cover those or they didn't. Um, so basically I've only been traveling on just ordinary, you know, non pre-existing coverage because when in all the years I've actually had the symptoms of this, I've never had a diagnosis and they would never accept anything without a diagnosis. So all in all, I'm really, really quite happy with that. Now, I don't think I can do any more. I've, I've read the product, um, uh, the state product statement or disclosure statement, whatever it is. And I've gone through that a few times and, you know, I, I can't fault this. It just seems to be kosher. It just seems to be truthful. So I can't say that there's anything else. I've looked at reviews for the company and, um, of course, you're not going to get 100% positive. But where the negative reviews were was mostly around people that had booked COVID insurance um, and didn't like it if they didn't exactly fit that standard. And I'm not, I can't quite put into words. For instance, Thailand um, has to have specifics and it has to note the specifics so that when you apply for a pass to get into Thailand, they can see there it's totally covered. So I didn't really look at that. Um, I've been emailing back and forwards this company and the response time for the return of uh, replying to the emails is only around about a week as well. And I just think that's pretty good. Um, so I am quite happy. So once again, this was just my quote. I did not go on to purchase it because I'm not ready yet. I want to be a bit closer. Um, so total for two people for three months, ordinary insurance plus pre-existing medical that covers, you know, the cerebral amyloid angiopathy. And I was honest. I worked on the information my neurologist gave me. So $2,248.55 Australian. Very happy with that. Um, very happy with that. Another thing too that I did like was um, I've in the past, um, some of the insurance coverages I've had have just basically uh, given you the option of one hospital to go to in that area. or, But with one cover, and according to the PSD product disclosure, it says that you can choose your own hospital. So I've, <laughs> I've searched and searched and that's what it says. So I'm very happy with that as well. Uh, and I would recommend you before you buy uh, any insurance is to have a look through their product disclosure. It's, it's a minefield because you know, they've got links to this and that and, you know, so I, and you're not lawyers. So I think you can only do the best you can. What I would say is like, this is probably the fourth or fifth um, insurance company that I've applied for. And um, I've only been accepted by this one and I would have got accepted from another one, which I spoke about earlier, uh, which didn't have great reviews. But it's very discouraging. It's awfully discouraging when you're going along and all you want, you just want someone to cover you. You just want to go on that holiday. You don't want to give up yet. We're not blooming dead and just, you know, buried. We've still got a lot of life in us. And I really want that. I don't want to give up traveling yet. Um, 
what else have I got here? Yeah, so when you're sitting down to start your quote, if you can have something in writing from your neurologist so that you can answer those questions as truthfully, because if you, you know, insurance companies, they look for any reason to not pay out and you don't want that. We, we When we need that cover, we're needing that for a reason. And now I'd like to say that, you know, oh, I've been really well for the last two years. I'm not expecting anything. It's, unex, you know, expect the unexpected because we don't know about tomorrow. Uh, I think that's about all about the insurance policy. One that I'm going with is called One Cover Travel Insurance. I don't know if it's only in Australia. Um, I don't know whether you can even purchase travel insurance from another country when you're living in another country. I don't need that headache and I'm not gone that far unless of course I get rejected and then the search is still on. So I hope that you found some interesting points in this. I hope I haven't waffled on. I There was a few occasions I had to re re edit, re um, shoot the, <laughs> the videos because you know sometimes concentration is really hard and not finding the word I want is really hard and um, so I hope you found something out of this. I would just like to also thank you all for um, you know following us that's been great. I think that's all for now. I think I'll continue this. I think there's a bit more of this video, so stay tuned. But thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video, which could be the next video right now. <laughs> because I've done, I've taped this so many times. We'll just have to see. Okay, so onwards and upwards.